Where? If I tickle you, will you tell me? <laughs> Model turned actress Cara Delevingne stars alongside actor and musician Jaden Smith in the romantic drama entitled Life in a Year that premiered last November 2020. The casting was first announced way back in March 2017, but it only came to fruition last 2020. Although the filming was delayed, both stars got pretty busy as well with Cara landing a role in Amazon Prime's Carnival Row, while Jaden took on a lot of personal projects before the both of them shared the screen for this movie. So here's a list of things of what Cara Delevingne and Jaden Smith shared about their movie, Life in a Year. A little warning up ahead though, this list contains some spoilers, so if you're good with that, feel free to proceed. But first, a simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We are giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad mini, or a MacBook Pro. It's all your choice, so be sure to leave a like, comment the keyword, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. Tears. A lot of tears have been shed between the two. I think this one is a bit obvious since it is a romantic drama. The movie tells the story of 17-year-old Darren, played by Jaden, who one day walks into an ice cream shop where he meets Isabel, Kara's character who works there. Darren was insistent on asking Isabel out on a date, of which Isabel reluctantly agrees to. Soon enough, their first date then was followed by another one, and another one, and another one, until Darren falls in love with her, but he senses she is hesitating for some reason. Eventually, Isabel shares the truth that she's suffering from stage 3 ovarian cancer with only one year to live. Rather than pull away from her, Darren drew up a plan to let Isabel hit as many milestones as she could in a year, with something as simple as giving a speech to the height of extremities like skydiving. From the plot alone, people initially got the impression that this was just another tragic teen love story. But the movie has more to it than that. Most especially now, during a global health situation, the film brings out the essence of living and cherishing your life to the fullest since we're all leaving this world sometime either sooner or later anyway. In a Zoom interview conducted by EW, Kara shares how it teaches you about love and what love really means and that love can be painful and it can be devastating, but it's also the thing we need the most and that will save the world. I don't think anyone can watch this movie and not bring a tear to your eye, but it also makes you laugh. It also makes you just feel a lot. I think that's so important. Jaden agreed with Kara's statement, adding a bit of his own opinion of how he got caught up by the movie, saying, I cried at multiple different times in the movie, and I usually don't get that type of effect from a movie that I'm in. It just really got to me. He further shared how even his father, Will Smith's own movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, didn't make him cry. But Life in a Year actually made him cry really hard. When director Mitya Okorn gathered everyone together for the movie's first table read, everyone, and I mean everyone, was crying. Mitya further shared in Entertainment Weekly how Will Smith wouldn't stop crying in front of everybody. Mitya said, Once the script reading started, everyone started hiding that they're going to cry, and then Will Smith didn't care and just cried. And from there he thought to himself, Oh great, I can work with this. And when he, we were shooting all these emotional scenes later, Will Smith was sitting behind me sobbing. If you're wondering why Will Smith is involved in the script reading, that's because he and his wife Jada Pinkett Smith served as executive producers for the film, and the movie is even under Will Smith's production company, Overbrook Entertainment. The movie director also admitted that he was not familiar with Kara, not until her name came up in the casting process. Overtaken by interest and curiosity, he watched all of her films for reference, but it was not until he landed on YouTube and watched the actress's funniest moments that he was convinced that she was the best person to portray the role of the free-spirited Isabel. Kara, of course, was more than welcome to the offer and even offered to shave her signature eyebrows. They both shaved their heads for the role. Another shared moment between the two is both of them shaving off their hair. To properly portray Isabel's struggles during chemotherapy, Kara needed to crop off her golden locks and shave her head. Likewise, Jaden also cut off his locks, since at the time he was sporting dreads and a longer hairstyle. She even said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that us having to shave our heads at the same time, he'll be in my life forever. To which also added that she kept a lock of Jaden's hair when it was cut off. This also goes to show why Isabel kept changing her hair color by then since she was wearing wigs. But overall, Kara cutting her hair acts as no surprise to many since back in 2017, she shook the world when she walked the red carpets of the Met Gala with her head shaved. The actress's reason for doing so is because she wanted to challenge the 
standards of beauty. In an interview with Women's Wear Daily, she stated that just doing it really was liberating. The kind of power and not needing hair to be beautiful. And that was the message. I really thought I needed to spread. And she was right. Beauty cannot be constrained by certain standards. And just so you know, it was Carl's idea to shave her head for the movie. Despite her manager and agent's protests, she continued to stick to her idea by saying that when it's a part like that, especially when it's about cancer, I needed to feel what it would be like to have no hair. The way you look, I think, it's so important to feel beautiful, no matter if you have hair. It doesn't matter at all. The model turned actress also shared how the opportunity to portray a character like Isabel, who's going through terminal cancer, was a special one to her. To quote Kara, as an actor, to be a vessel to understand what it takes to have something like stage 3 ovarian cancer, it's not a dream role obviously, but in a way, it's an incredible gift to be given, especially when you put in the work. Jaden and Kara have a great chemistry on screen and off screen. The two first met when Kara worked with Jaden's father on the film adaptation of DC's Suicide Squad, wherein she played the role of Dr. June Moon, the Enchantress, opposite Will Smith's character, Deadshot, but it was not until this movie that they were able to work together. Kara is known to be one of the popular free-spirited models that walked runways left and right, while also being cast in various roles. Jaden has been pretty much an enigma, but what we do know is his love for music, which he focuses on. They share a love for music. We all know Jaden Smith to be a musician and even shared his ultimate quarantine love song in an episode of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon in August 2020. Credited under his name, he has three studio albums, three mixtapes, three extended plays, 16 singles, and 28 music videos. He has collaborated with several artists, such as Justin Bieber, whom he paired up with to sing the soundtrack of Karate Kid, a movie he starred in back in 2010. But are you all aware that Kara is also a gifted musician? Yep, she's not just your regular pretty face. The actress is also gifted with musical talents. She can beatbox, play the guitar, and piano. The actress also sang I Feel Everything, one of the original songs from her movie Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, where she starred in along with Dane Dehan. So it's only natural that these two have so much chemistry as Darren and Isabel. Kara and Jaden both do their share of charity. Aside from their love for music, the two also do their share of work for a better world. Jaden is known for using his platform to speak out on social injustices and amplifying the voice of climate change. Aside from that, he is also responsible for the 501c3, a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to environmental justice. Through this project, Jaden was able to distribute the mobile water filtration systems, or the water boxes, which led to purifying more than 19,000 gallons of water in the communities of Flint, Michigan. Kara is also involved in Project Zero, an organization dedicated to finding ways to urge people to fight, protect, and restore the ocean. Like Jaden, she is also vocal about the social injustices happening in the world and encourages the youth to step forward and do their part in saving the planet. Their characters complement each other. In the movie, Darren's family, especially his dad, has a plan to attain his son's goals. Since his father came from a poor background and climbed his way to his wealth, it's only natural for him to want want Darren to succeed as well. And the fastest and most efficient way for Darren to achieve that is to stick to his plans. However, Darren, despite his reluctance to admit it, is suffocated by his father's ways. In contrast to Darren, we have Isabel who is fiery and an impulsive spirit, which is what's lacking from Darren's life. Unlike him, she defies bounds, thanks to her father parent, Phil. From these observations alone, it's kind of obvious how they complement each other. Darren needs the freedom and reckless abandon, well, maybe just a bit, that Isabel has. Whereas Isabel will benefit from Darren's stability, balance, and being grounded. A yin-yang couple, if I do say so myself. And that concludes the list of what Cara Delevingne and Jaden Smith share about their movie, Life in a Year. If you're in the mood for a good cry, this movie is a knocker. And it'll also make you appreciate the beauty and fragility of life all the more. You can catch Life in a Year on Amazon Prime. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.